Brother Dale, we, we, Brother Chris, you have Brother Dale send some batteries down here, please. Naomi, you get those batteries for Brother Dale. You got us up there, Brother Chris? All right, good to see everybody tonight. We're still getting some things together. We were running just a hair behind this evening, uh, working on some stuff and just got uh, busy trying to get it done. And so forgive us, if you will. And uh, we're glad you're joining us this evening here at Pentecostal Tabernacle for our Wednesday night Bible study. And uh, we're looking good, looking forward to a good night in the Lord, amen, and uh, for you joining us. And uh, uh, make sure that you're watching as you're watching that you, um, that you will, uh, if you got questions, make sure to uh, ask us. We'll do our best to get to those questions uh, as they come across but do understand this, that sometimes uh, we are not able to see them right away. Amen. So here we are. We're trying to get stuff going here. I needed some batteries. Uh, but good to see all of you this evening. Uh, one quick announcement I need to make is that Sunday, uh, Bishop, we're going to have drive-in service. Praise God. Uh, the, uh, weather permitting, you know, as long as it's not raining, I think, if it's raining, I think we'll not try to do it. It's supposed to be pretty. Yeah, it's supposed to be pretty Sunday in the 60s, so uh, I'm going to have some guys out here with some parking attendants parking you, getting you set up where you need to be. Uh, somebody gave me a great idea today uh, uh, for, they asked me how I was going to take up tithes and offering. And I said, well, I hadn't really thought about that because I hadn't. I thought, well, we just keep it the same and uh, we would uh, uh, just, you know, give online or you could mail it or whatever. Uh, but somebody said they, they heard of a church uh, putting out big trash cans and they could drive up to the trash can and put their money in it. So we're going to look about filling up a 55 gallon trash can with tithes. Amen. Uh, we're going to do laundry baskets instead. So uh, we're glad everybody's watching tonight, seeing everybody jump on here. Sister Shirley and uh, uh, Sister Kimberly Curry's watching. My brother, Sister Rhonda, Brother Jackie, Trey, Sister Angie, Sister Miranda. Hey, there's Lakin. Yeah, all the way from Hawaii. Hi, Lake. Good to see you. Goo goo. <laughs> She'll appreciate that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You don't have it? I see it on here. It's showing up on here. Uh, so, uh, Sister Megan's watching, Sister Cindy, Sister Patricia Callens. Good to see all of you. If I start naming names, I'll miss somebody. Uh, there she's waving. Hi, Lake. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for watching with us tonight. We're going to be starting a new chapter tonight, uh, chapter 14 in our books. Y'all just hold on because Pastor finally figured out how to get the uh, our our projector screen words over to our live stream finally so hopefully uh, I, I maybe we could even do it Sunday I don't know if we do it uh, through live stream we'll be able to figure that out but uh, been working on that forever trying to figure that out and so uh, we're finally getting that to that's going to be a good asset so you can see the words to our songs and to the scriptures we're reading Amen. as we're live streaming you'll be able to go along with us so I thank God for that and finally getting all that figured out uh, so um, let's see uh, so Sunday 10 30 Church is going to start. Make sure that everybody stays in their vehicles. Uh, nobody can get out. If you have to go to the restroom, I guess you just have to leave and go home. Uh, <laughs> uh, you just need to make sure you go. I'm going to try to keep it to uh, a minimum. You know, I'm not going to try to, to um, uh, get out and, and stay out there for a long period of time because uh, I know that some of you have your kids and stuff, but according to the, the guidelines that they've given us, we have to stay in our vehicles uh, and keep that social distancing at, going. Hopefully this thing's coming to an end. Uh, I'm starting to see some light at the end of the tunnel, I believe. Uh, they're going to start uh, making some new regulations and stuff, letting us get back to uh, some of the things that we normally do. And I pray that church is the very first thing Amen. I am so missing y'all. Y'all have no idea. Uh, we miss you so bad. And we're just looking forward to getting back into the house of the Lord together and 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 um and being amen. Um 
uh, being together as a body, as a group. Amen. Sister Sarah, Brother Scott, good to see you guys. Sister Evelyn Cox, good to see you. Sister Linda Collins. Hi, Sister Linda. Good to see all of y'all. Got a bunch of people jumping on here, Bishop. So uh, let's go ahead and open in prayer tonight. We do have some prayer requests still. We need to remember Joe Ash, and we need to remember Lennon Black. Um, we need to remember Brother Jeff Ball still. He is much better. Got to see him this week. He is doing better. And then also uh, Brother Jim D still needs our prayers. Um uh, Timmy Clapp's family still needs our prayers. Remember them in prayer. Uh, there's many others. Uh, Brother Ray Alford, he needs our prayers tonight. Let's remember him and Sister Jolene in prayer. Uh, so make sure that you uh, continue to pray for them tonight. We're just going to get uh, started here tonight, get Bishop to open us up with prayer. Bishop, open us with prayer tonight. Heavenly Father, we just come before you tonight, and we do thank you, God, for this day. Father, you have brought us through it, God, and you're going to keep your hand upon us. Father, we know, God, that this too shall come to pass. And God, as we come before you tonight, we ask for your anointing, God, to be upon us as we uh, read your word, study your word. We pray for those that are watching, God, Father, that your presence and your anointing, God, would move on them. Father, that if they need healing, God, there's many of our uh, parishioners that need healing. We just lift them up to you, Father, and some's lost loved ones, God. We just pray that you would encourage them, Father, at this time. And Father, we just ask you now to be with us. God, keep your hand up on us, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. I was told to talk. <laughs> I don't like to do that without... Um, yeah. <laughs> Without, with very short notice. But I'm glad you've all joined us tonight, and I'll just give my spill that I always give. Is The book that we're using for Bible study is Foundations for Living by Reverend Robert C. Howard. And on our church Facebook page, you can find the link to find this book. It's a very good book. A majority of it is scripture, straight scripture. And, it, I mean, you'll enjoy it. If you don't have it already, we encourage you to get it. Yes, amen. Okay, all right. And and Brother Trey has already pointed out the best is yet to come. The best is yet to come. That and is I a fact. Am in agreement. So with that. Uh, before we get started on our study, we had we did have one question come in uh, this week, and we're going to go ahead and um, and get to it before we get started on this one. And I'm going to pull it up here if you'll give me just a few minutes. the The question was. Um, uh, the book of Revelations was written so people would know what would happen at the end times, which we believe that uh, if we didn't serve the Lord, right? That's the book of Revelations is a, a, a uh, outline of what will happen if you don't know Jesus after the rapture uh, of, of the Christians, okay? And so the next part of this question was, his question is, though, is why do Christians study the book of Revelations if we don't believe we will be here uh, for the tribulations? Uh, the reason why we, we still read that and we still study that, it's a good, it's a good point, a good reference of why we shouldn't be here when those things take place. Well, I mean, for my loved ones, I want to encourage them and explain to them, this is what's to come if you're not taken out in the rapture. And if we can't understand that, we can't explain it to them. If I don't know it, I can't explain it to others. You know, all through the Bible, God, God spoke to Adam and Eve and told Adam and Eve, said, you know, you can do anything you want to here and, you know, except you can't eat of the tree in the, in the garden. And the reason he told them that, he said, the day you take of that tree, uh, that you're going to die. Uh, and, and they did, they ate of it. The problem today is, is when in Revelations, we're going to, I want Marcus to read some stuff, if you will. If you'll turn to Revelations chapter 1, Pastor Marcus. Is this, is this pertaining to what we're going to be studying now? Or no, it's to this, to question? this question. Okay. And uh, read, read it us uh, chapter 1, verse 1 through verse 4, and then we're going to go to uh, chapter 2, verses uh, 1 uh, through 5. Listen to what uh, John is speaking uh, because this, all of this is a warning. I can say this: that if a, if the if the speed limit's fifty-five, 
and it tells you it's 55. There's a law that says if you drive above that and you get caught, you're going to have to pay a ticket. It's the same way with the Word of God. God warns man all the way through, through the Bible and says, you can do this. What was the first commandment? To love the Lord thy God with, with all, all thy heart, heart, with all thy soul, and all thy mind, and all thy will. The second is to love thy neighbor as thyself. These are things that God teaches us that helps us get through life right now. And there will be people that have been to church and been church, but have not accepted Christ as a Lord and Savior. It's going to be here during this time. So go ahead and read that. So it kind of Revelations what? Chapter 1, 1 through, one through 4. 1 through 4. It's, it's funny because Brother Jim D. just posted on Facebook on the, on the live stream, Revelations 1, chapter 3. And we're going to read that. Yeah. Uh, Revelations chapter 1 and verse 1 says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, uh, speaking of John the Revelator, mm-hmm. uh, to show unto us his servants things which must shortly come to pass. Okay, so so he's saying to the servants, which is us, or mm-hmm. to the pastors, or whoever, the Christians. That, that these are things that are going to happen. So when you get in a pulpit, you'll be able to explain to people what's going to happen after the church is gone, and that you don't have to you don't have to go through that. Go right. ahead, and and it says. Uh, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John, John the Revelator, mm-hmm. who bear record, verse 2, who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all the things that he saw. Now, now it was the testimony of the Lord. It's the word of the Lord. It's the testimony. God is, is giving us warning, giving us opportunity uh, to, you know, to, uh, to know him and, and to not go through what is... It's going to happen. That's correct. Go ahead. And then verse 3 says, Blessed is he that readeth and they that hear the words of this prophecy. Right. Amen. So so you got to hear it. you got to read it because it might change your mind and make you want to say, well, you know what? I believe I'll give my heart to God because I I don't want to go through this. What I love is is that the – and and it's, it's perfectly fine. That's that's, I'm just telling you what I love about the Word of God is that we can find the answers in the Word. Exactly. Everything uh, you're asking. Everything, everything we need is right here in this book. And so and just because you didn't know that is okay. There's lots of folks out there that don't know that. And, that, and that's why God's given Bishop the ability to pull those scriptures out and others to pull those scriptures out and to give us the answers that we need right here in the Word of God so that you know it's not something that we've made up. But it's something that's written down in the Word of God, in the Gospel. The whole first chapter, if you read it, if those of you that haven't read it, read it, because it explains so much to you why it's needful for us to understand the revelation of God of what's going to happen in the last days. Amen. Now, chapter 2, begin to read that, verses 1 through. I didn't read verse 4. Do you want me to read verse 4? I didn't yeah, read okay, three get three four. Four. yeah, get 4. Blessed bless is he that, that readeth the, and they that hear the words of, of this prophecy and uh-huh. keep those things which are written therein for the time is at hand. The time is at hand. Yep, that's verse 3. Verse 4 says, John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, grace be unto you and peace from him which is and which was and which is to come. We know so, who that is. Right. Talking about Jesus. Yep. Uh, and from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Okay, the seven spirits, if you'll study the word of God, is the seven pastors of the seven churches in Asia. So if you would, go ahead to chapter 2 and read verses 1 through 5. Chapter 2, verse 1. Uh-huh. I could have made it a little shorter, but it help us understand a little better if people don't know. Now, Bishop, let's talk about something right here. We're, we're, we're not even on our study yet, folks. We're answering this question of why do, do Christians need to read Revelations if, uh, or need to study Revelations if we don't plan on being here. It's a warning for us and a sign for us not to be here when the, when the time comes. Now, I want to point something out right here uh, real quick, Bishop, is that According to the word of God, and it is written, the words that are written in red are, writ- are Jesus' own words, correct? Right, exactly. Well, here we're finding in Revelations, the last book of the Bible after Jesus is dead, we're already, or not dead, but been buried and resurrected, uh, ascended. These are the we're, words of Christ. These are the words of Christ. Yeah. Uh, that, that's important to, to notice and to take notice, too, that even in Revelations, uh, these are the, uh, John was saying this was spoken straight from Jesus' mouth. 
you know, Pastor Marcus, it hadn't been, but just last week, I believe it was, had a tornado to come through Mississippi, and it, it was like uh, 50, I think it was 50 miles wide or something like that, or 50 ball fields and 100 miles was, long. Yeah. And, and they begin to talk on the, on the TV and to tell the people and to warn them, there's a tornado coming. If you live here, if you live there, you need to take cover now because this, this uh, tornado is coming. Well, you need to understand what we're talking about is going to come. Whether you believe it or you don't believe it, you know, I mean, it's going to happen whether you do or whether you don't. That's it. And so we're trying to take the Word of God and bring to you uh, the news that you need to hear to make a right decision for the day that you're living in. Yep. Amen. Go ahead and get that, Pastor. All right. Uh, chapter 2, where you want me to read down to verse 5, right? Yeah. Chapter yes. 2, Revelations. Under the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? Now this These is things. Uh-huh. that's the church of Ephesus. He's church in Ephesus. To you. Yes, saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. You know, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm, I, I might have mentioned that wrong. The seven, the seven golden candlesticks is the pastors, I believe, and uh, I'm not. Sure. I believe that's right. But go ahead. I'll get it later. Okay, uh, verse three says, "And has borne and just and has patience, and for my name's sake has labored and has not fainted." Verse four says, "Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love." Verse five, okay, because I have left thy first love. So here, here comes a warning. It's in Revelations. It's to the churches, and there's seven churches. If you read about the seven churches, there was something wrong with most of them, or all of them, mm-hmm. and there was things that needed to be taken care of. And so he's telling them, "Go ahead." Okay. Uh, verse. Five says, remember therefore, remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and uh-huh. repent, and do the first works, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Amen. Brother Callan, if you're watching, I, help me out a he little is. bit. I think, I think the stars or the seven pastors or uh, the it's, candlesticks, I think, may be the church. I, I, I get mixed it's up one of the. It's either one or the other. Yeah. Uh, Brother Callan, he he can look. And Brother he, Michael, if you're call. if you're watching, you can you can help us out. You can uh, help us out and comment there on which it's the seven stars and which are the seven, seven candlesticks, candlesticks. which just, is just, the meaning of each of those. If you read on it, it, it I think it makes it, it does. pretty well plain. Do you have more answers for that, or can I get the input? Go ahead, give some input. Sister. Okay, so I just an, another reason why I think it is important that those who claim to be followers of Christ study the book of Revelations is when you read this book, most people at first glance think it's nothing but gloom and doom. But this book is not just gloom and doom and what's going to happen after the rapture and the tribulation and things. When you read further past that, you get to see the victory of Christ and his bride and how they will reign and it talks of heaven and how heaven will be and there will be no sorrow and there will be no tears and there will be no pain and there will be no death. And it basically just says we win. And if you don't study and read this book of the Bible, you're not going to realize and hold on to that hope that we win, that we've won. It's already been won. First Lady, uh, you know, uh, it talks about also in Revelations about the New Jerusalem being 1,400 miles square. That's 1,400 miles square, 1,400 miles this way, in every direction. And not only that, he tells you about the streets of gold. He tells you about the walls of Jasper. He talks about all of these things that God has prepared for them that love him. That's not back over here somewhere. But this is also a, a uh, this revelation is something to help us realize, hey, man, this is, this is awesome. This is right. Revelations chapter 1 and verse 20. Thank you, Brother Jim D. and Brother Michael Callens. They both answered and answered correctly. I knew it was something. Uh, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand and the seven golden candlesticks. The seven stars yeah. are the angels of the seven churches, That's which the are the pastors. Are the pastors. Right. right. And then the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are, are the churches. seven churches. Churches. Thank so you, So the guys. stars are the pastors <laughs> and the candlesticks are the churches. Amen. All right. We, we'll work it out together. I'll just... Uh, I don't remember like I used to, but go ahead. <laughs> Amen. 
If the devil knows the word, why don't he give up? Because he's too stubborn and hard-headed, Trey. <laughs> he ain't got enough sense to give up. <laughs> hey, he lost the keys to his own house. I don't know. He's pretty stupid. <laughs> this, this is why the devil doesn't give up. Because he wants to take as many of God's people with him as he possibly can. And that's why he attacks yeah. and he's ruling the world. Because he doesn't want to go down by himself. He right. has the mentality of if I'm going down, I'm taking as many with me as because not not so much because it hurts us, but because it hurts God's heart. Hurts God yeah. that that person did not choose the Father and the love of the Father, and so that's why the devil doesn't give up. He knows he loses, yeah. but you he's know, trying to take as many with him as he can. You know, First Lady, uh, it says John ten ten, the Bible says that the right. thief, the devil, has come to kill. To not to steal, steal yeah. to kill and destroy. Right. And what what that means is destroy means that is to totally annihilate you, right. that there'd be no remembrance in the earth of you. Right. Uh, and so you know, I mean that. I mean, to steal is one thing, kill, but destroy. destroy. And so he's out to destroy you and to, to totally annihilate you, That's right. to vaporize you that you was ever in the earth. But you, you got to understand, there's a soul, and that soul lives forever. Amen. That's right. That's right. Uh, let's see. Uh, we're going to be starting tonight in chapter 14 in our books. Uh, Chapter 14, the resurrection of the just. And so we're, I think what we're going to do here, we're going to go into a little more depth of the resurrection of the saints. Uh, yeah. We're going to be discussing that, what it means, what it pertains to, who it pertains to, and describing it and showing it a little uh, a little bit more in depth uh, uh, in this study. So uh, we want you to go along with us as we go through this. Now, if you really want to follow us, you need to get a book. You need to order that book. It's real easy. Uh, you could. It's a great book. Uh, I just. Inc I really encourage you to to uh, get this book if you can. It's twenty dollars, uh, which is is really cheap. I think it's twenty. It maybe uh, it maybe yeah, a different price they, online. I don't know what they're doing, uh, but uh, it's a it's a good book, and I want you to to get it if you can. Okay. And in case you missed it, the link is in the comments. The link is in the comments. If you just need to go back up a little bit. You can see it there, okay? All right. Let's get started here tonight. We're going to start uh, in our text tonight in John chapter 11, verse 1 through 3. And then uh, we, will, uh, we will jump down to uh, verses 21 uh, through 26, and then verses 34 through 44. John chapter 11, verse 1 starts like this. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister, uh, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Verse 3 says this, Therefore his sister sent unto him, uh, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. Verse 21. Verse 21 says, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Verse 22 says, But I know that even now, whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Verse 23, Jesus saith unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Verse 24, Martha saith unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. And Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Woo. I'm about to shout. Amen. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believeth thou this? Boy. I love that scripture. Amen. Believe it thou. I like those last three words. Be, be, believe do you believe thou. this? Believe thou do, me. Do you believe thou this? Are you listening to what? Are you, are you getting ready for this? Amen. Okay. Uh, let's see. Verse 34. We're going to jump down to verse 34. Uh, let's see. And it said, where have, uh, where have you laid him? They said unto him, Lord, come and see. Verse 35. Jesus wept. Hold right there just a second. You didn't, I was. <laughs> okay, go ahead. If you got something, no, go I'm ahead. on. 
the Bible says, and, and a lot of people, that I felt like the Lord has given me this. And I never heard anybody else say it, but I'm sure it's been said. But anyway, why, why did Jesus weep? That's the shortest. He, he loved Lazarus. Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham. He, he was no more pain. There was no more suffering. So why was Jesus weeping? He said he was a friend of Lazarus, yes, but Lazarus is in a better place. And I was praying and I'm asking the Lord about that. And I, I believe the Lord revealed to me the reason that Jesus wept that day standing there was because he was going to have to bring him back out out of that uh, Abraham's bosom, back here on this earth to prove to a bunch of hard-headed people that Jesus is who he says he is. Right. And that's why he began to weep, because he knew that Lazarus is going to have to come back to, to get the people to believe. Right. Yeah, I, I believe that. I've, I've heard it, uh, I believe, around about that same direction, Bishop, that Jesus just, he, he wasn't weeping because Lazarus was dead because Jesus already knew the outcome of Lazarus' uh, ending, whether it was whether he raised him or whether he was raised in the resurrection. Jesus knew what the ending was. And a lot of people say and believe that Jesus wept because of the people's unbelief. That's what I said. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The unbelief. Yep. That's, why, that's why he was trying to bring him back so that the people could, uh, you know, even Jesus prayed to the Father you know, about having to do that. But he said, because of their unbelief. Go ahead. All right. Verse 36 says, Then said the Jews, Behold how he loved him. And uh, so they said that because they thought he was crying because, right. because, of, he, was, because he was dead. Right. In verse 37, And some of them said, Could not this man which opened the eyes of the blind have caused that even this man should not have died? And Jesus, therefore, again groaning in himself, cometh to the grave. It was a cave, and a stone lay upon it. Mm. Alien. <laughs> I could preach that. Uh -huh. <laughs> Jesus said, Take you away the stone. Because I'm going to tell you something. Can I, can I just go ahead for a few minutes? Well, go ahead. Uh, some of you, it's been a minute. I feel like it's been a minute since I preached, I guess. And, uh, uh, some of you are like Lazarus right now spiritually. You're dead, and you this, you've been put in a cave with a stone rolled over it, and Jesus is standing at, at, at the door of your cave hollering Lazarus, or whatever your name is, telling you to come up out of that grave. Amen. Amen. And you know what? You ain't even got to roll it away. No. They'll roll it away, or he'll roll it away for you. All you there got you to get. do is come back out. That's it. And uh, so Jesus, therefore, again groaning, verse 39, Jesus said, take you away the stone. Martha and his sister of him that was dead saith unto him, Lord, by this time he stinketh. <laughs> I got something else I want to say. Ben's this last Sunday was, was uh, Easter. Easter. And uh, they went the next day. The ladies went down to with Spikeners and all those things, spices. To, and they got down there, and the stone was rolled away. And I, I wonder if you understand that in its fullness, because why did the, why was the stone rolled away? Jesus didn't have to have the stone rolled away; he could have walked through the stone and come out. You know, I mean, he 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 was a spirit; he was a spirit being then, but he rolled that stone away so you could get in, Amen. so you could look in there and see, I'm not here; I, I am who I say I am, and I've done what I said I would do, Amen. and that's why the stone was rolled away. It's not for for him to get out. But for us to look in. That's it. Uh, Sister Judy tells a great story. She had the privilege of going to Israel and visiting the tomb. And she said the tomb is a very restricted area. And the guide said that nobody could be in the tomb without a guide. And so her and the guide had gone down into the tomb. And she said the guide, she said they turned around and nobody had followed them, the rest of them down, or, or something had happened somewhere. And she said that the guide turned around to her and said, you stay right here, I'll be right back. So that left Sister Judy in the tomb by herself in that empty tomb, and she said it was the most great, most of, one of the most wonderful experiences she'd ever experienced was being in that empty tomb with just her and, and, and the Spirit of God. <laughs> Amen. And so what an awesome testimony that is. Uh, we love Mimi's stories, too, because they're, they're good stories. Uh, Pastor, there's a lot could be said about her. <laughs> uh, when we went to Africa, Ghana, West Africa, we went in to see a king over and got permission to go in and see to him, and nobody had ever got to go in or pray 
but and, and it had been prophesied that we would get to go into kings and queens and pray. We got to go in there, and, and uh, God was letting us in and said, whatever you do, said that don't step on that leopard skin in front of, of the king. If you do, you'll die. They'll, they'll kill you. Well, guess what? Sister Judy stepped on the leopard skin. <laughs> Thank God he didn't kill nobody. But she's she made always, it out alive. She's always finding herself she's, in some of them places. Tell the story. But we got to pray. We got to pray in there uh, too. And and all of the all of the kings in that province in that area was in was in that meeting. Yeah. And it was an awful experience. Go Amen. ahead. And uh, they said that uh, he stinks by now. Some of y'all be stinking. <laughs> For he hath been dead four days. But that's all right. You're going to come out of that stinking mess. You hear me? <laughs> and Jesus said unto her, said I not unto thee that if thou wouldest believe, thou should see the glory of God. Then they took away the stone from the place where the dead was laid. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and said, Father, I thank thee that thou hast heard me. Yeah, go ahead. Verse 42. And I knew that thou hearest me always. But because of the people which stand by, I said it, that they may believe that thou hast sent me. There you go. That's why he had to call him back. That's right. All right. And when he thus had spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he, every time I think about that, y'all, I think about the Carmen, Carmen song. song. Uh, if you don't Lazarus. know it, Lazarus. Jesus? Yeah. <laughs> Lazarus? Jesus? Lazarus? Hey. Jesus? It's good. You got to go yeah. look it up and watch <laughs> it. Not maybe, right now when this is over. Maybe our awesome media team can post the link here so that yep. we can look at it later. <laughs> Uh, and when he had, he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he that was dead came forth, bound hand and foot with grave clothes, and his face was bound about with a napkin. And Jesus saith unto him, Loose him and let him go. Go ahead. <laughs> y'all, y'all forgive me. Oh, Lord. I, I wonder if they had a problem with the coronas. <laughs> he had a mask on it and wrapped up. Oh, my <laughs> y'all forgive me. Well, he was sick. We don't yeah. know what he was sick with. No, he, he had been dead. My turn to preach. Uh, but he turned to now. preach? Yeah, my Go turn. ahead, First Lady, preach. My turn to preach. Okay, so just because I feel like somebody watching, maybe even right now, or will watch the replay, needs to hear this. Lazarus could not lose himself. That's now, right. Jesus called him forth, and he came, but he, it says he was still bound in those grave clothes. And I think they say there's about 100 steps down into where he was at, and he come out of there. He had to jump to get out because he, he yeah, was bound. Yeah, he had to kind of hop because he was bound, hand and foot, with grave clothes. And Jesus said to, the, said to those that were there, loose him and let him go. Now, this is, this is what I want to share to somebody watching or who may watch. This is what I feel like you need to know, is that it's very important who you have around you in your life because not everybody that you associate with or hang around with is willing to loose you from your grave clothes. Some people want right. you to stay bound and where you are, and so... They may be even around you, hanging around the grave, watching you come forth, but they're not willing to help set you free, get you free from that bondage. So you need to have people around you that you know have got your back when Jesus calls you out of whatever you're in. Amen. That they are going to be willing to do their part to encourage you and uplift you and see that you're on the path that Jesus is calling you to. Don't stay bound. You know, some friends, as long as you can buy them another beer, uh, they're your friends. Right, but when exactly. you find yourself in trouble and you don't have the money, they'll, they'll either forsake you or they'll go their own way. Right. And, and, but if they're your real friends, they, they're going to they're gonna stand by your side, even if you get saved. But right, if you get exactly. saved and, and they're sinners, they'll, they'll drop you like a hot potato. And, and the funny thing is that we find is a lot of times even those who do drop you when they need something, when they've got something going on in their life, they still know who to call. And they may not show up until they need prayer, but they know that they can come to you. And that's your opportunity to rise above, to be the bigger person and show what kind of person Jesus has really called yeah. you to be. 
because they they always will. It uh, they, they can leave you hanging, they can leave you high and dry, but it never fails. They're still watching the life you live. Yes, they are. You know, I, I, a lot of time I have friends that, um, and they are my friends. But when I see them coming, I know what they're coming for. Right. Because I never see them until they need something. Right. You know, and 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 I love them. You know, and I do what I can for them. But we all have people like that. But we need people that, are, like Sister Emily was saying, stand by your side. That'll Amen. be there when the when the good times and in the bad times. That's right. That's right. But we know this for a fact: Jesus will never forsake us nor leave Amen. us. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. He said He'd be with us even to the very end. Amen. Uh, so here we are. We're talking about the resurrection. This is this is this is what always blow my mind about the story about Lazarus, is that Lazarus died. And his soul and his spirit went to heaven, went to paradise. Abraham's bosom. Abraham's bosom. Right, Abraham's bosom. What it says. So he came, Jesus brought him back to life from the grave. Guess what? Lazarus had to die again. Right. Now, when the resurrection comes, he will be raised, his body will be raised up again. again. Twice. Isn't that, <laughs> isn't, isn't that wild to think about? It's pretty wild, yeah. I, I don't know how God's got it planned, but it'll work how it went for Harry each sides. Mm -hmm. All right. Ver, chapter, or page 181 in our book. Jesus loved Lazarus, who was sick, and Mary and Martha, Lazarus' sisters, called for Jesus to come and heal him. Jesus delayed his coming, and during this time, Lazarus died. Mary came to meet Jesus and told him if he had been there, Lazarus would not have died. Martha told Jesus, Jesus if he had been there, Lazarus would not have died in John chapter 11, verse 21 through 26, where he talks about, I am the resurrection, the life. We just read that. Mary also said in 1132, then when Mary was come where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet, saying unto him, Lord, thou hast been here, my brother had not died. Jesus told Martha and Mary that Lazarus would rise again. Martha said she knew Lazarus would rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So she believed in the resurrection herself. And Jesus told Martha in John eleven twenty five 25 through 26, Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? All right, resurrection in the Thayer's Greek lexicon. Uh, that word is uh, an anastasis, anastosis, uh, a raising up, a rising, a rising from the dead. Webster's Dictionary says the state of one risen from the dead. As Christians, we look forward to entering into eternal, into eternal life where we will be with the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. And God's word promises in Acts 111, which also said, You men of Galilee, why stand you gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come in a like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. We just, we just read about that Sunday on Easter Sunday. We're looking for a repeat. Amen. 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 This is where you can post the link to the Happy Good Men singing, I believe he's coming back, just like he said. <laughs> If it don't make you shout, your wood's wet. Amen. It makes me excited. I'm ready. Oh, good deal. Ma King and Lucy Moss are watching with us tonight. All right. Good to, good to have y'all <laughs> with us tonight. Bless you, Lucy and Mama. Yep. Mama King, we've been a long way together. Yes, they all have. Amen. Miss, miss getting to see them in yep. service with us even before this. Miss getting to see them. Sister Ma King says she loves all of y'all. Amen. We love y'all too. We huh? love you, Ma. Uh, the same Jesus will come again. Amen. The return of the Lord is imminent. When he comes, the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, I, I know this question is probably going to come up. Because the Bible says that we will be changed, and this will all happen in, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye. Amen. This is, this is how quick it's going to be. 
I believe that the swiftness of it, because somebody's probably thinking, well, am I going to be standing there? Am I going to, if I'm not saved, or if I'm saved, am I going to see those graves bust open and then they're going to go up and then I'm going to go up behind them? I believe that it's going to happen so quick that the human eye will not know the difference between the one and the other. Well, you see, the dead are here. Yeah. We're standing here. So by the time when they, they come get, out of the ground and they meet our head, we're going to we're going to go together. So uh, I just believe that that is going to 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 to, to um, um, you know we, that's going to happen so quick. We're not going to know the differences. Exactly. I, I believe that in my spirit, and I, I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'll I'll find out one day. Well, he says maybe. there's no respect or person, so I mean we got to all go together. That's it. <laughs> all right. As long as I get there. As long as I get there. That's there what. I, that's my most my most important uh, worry is right now. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians four sixteen through seventeen says this: For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise for, first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. My goodness, if that just doesn't get you excited right there, just that, just those two scriptures. Amen. I mean, that's just so awesome to think well, it's about. Such, it's such a promise that He's yeah. given us. I mean, I say, uh, you're talking time. about you're talking about no, no more sickness and no more sorrow, no more pain, and the place that He's prepared for us. There's something else I want to say tonight because I've struggled with this for a while, and I finally got a hold of it. Uh, God said in the beginning, and I said something about this here a while back. God said in the beginning that he created man out of the dust of the earth. Right. He breathed in his nostrils and he became a living soul. Right. The soul is the part that lives forever. Right. The body that's, that was in the, that's made out of the dirt, when we're changed, that flesh can't go to heaven. So our body is changed, body, soul, and spirit. Then the body stays in the ground, this body. Then our soul goes into our spirit. And there we are eternally. And we'll have a new spiritual body. Amen. Amen. I don't know if that helped anybody, but it, it helped me. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, let's see. Following the tribulation, Jesus shall return to earth as King of kings and Lord of lords. We discussed that in the last, last chapter. Uh, and together with his saints, who, sh who shall be kings and priests, he shall reign a thousand years. That's Revelation 19, 11 through 16. Jot that down. Go back and read it, okay? Uh, when Christ returns, he will rule the nations with a rod of iron. Uh, we, uh, his resurrected saints, will come back with him, and we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. Now, during that thousand years, we're going to be doing, we're not going to be just sitting around. Right, we're going. We're going to come back and reign with him. There's going to be things we're going to be doing during that thousand years, as far as what he wants us to do to help, whatever it is. Exactly. Uh, so um, let's see. So resurrected saints will come back with him, and we will rule and reign with him for a thousand years. We're not going to be not going to be idle. Right. Uh, and we're not going to be still. Okay. So we're going to be busy. So the question is, what happens when we die? Paul tells us in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 6 through 8. Uh, Therefore, we are always confident knowing that whilst we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. Verse 7, for we walk by faith and not by sight. Verse 8, we are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body and to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. While we are alive in our uh, earthly bodies, we are absent from the Lord. When Christians die, we enter into the presence of the Lord forever. For the Christian death is a promotion to eternal glory. Death is not something that we should fear or loathe. It is something that we should look forward to, I guess. Exactly. That's kind of hard to say, but you, it's, it is. Well, you know, it's appointed unto man. Wants to die. Then the, the, day, the, day, they, the day that that nurse or that doctor hit you in the honey and you started crying. <laughs> the clock started. You, the clock started. You started dying. 
That's why it's important you understand that, that this, this, this is just a short time here on earth. And that we've got, if we accept Christ, amen, we've got a, we've got a better day coming. So when you're in that, or when they're looking at that body that's there, we're not there. We're in the presence of God. That's right. That is correct. Okay. For the unsaved, listen to this. If you're watching tonight and you're not saved, you need to understand something. It's a different story. Uh-huh. Luke 16, 19 through 23. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. And it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angel into... Abraham's bosom, the rich man also died, and he was buried. And in hell, he lift up his eyes. In where? In hell. In hell, he lift up his eyes, being in torment, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. Wow, that's awesome, isn't it? It is. Oh, I, I'm going to share something. We, we may have. I may have already shared this. I'm not sure. But anyway, if I have, maybe somebody's watching and didn't see it. But I heard I heard a pastor uh, on TV, and I'm not going to call no names, but he pr- was preaching a prosperity message, and he he was saying that uh, if you're if you're poor and, and you don't have money, that you're not a Christian, because God wants us to be blessed. But I don't. When I said that, I thought, well, my God, uh, uh, Lazarus was laying at his gate, and dogs licking his sword, didn't have enough money to buy him something to eat, and the rich man had plenty of money, but the, the rich man went to hell. That's right. And Lazarus went to the, to Abraham's bosom, folks. Let me tell you something. You may be as poor as what? What do you call it? Last year's turkey, or I don't know what you say. But anyway, you you know, dried up as last year's corn shucks. I, I guess, know. yeah. <laughs> But it's not about how much money you have. That little woman you had two mites gave more than all the rest of them gave together. That's it. That's you what know, it says. listen, it's not about your money. It's about your heart. Amen. And if you'll get your heart right with God, God will get right with you. All you got to do is ask him. It's not about repent. What, it's not about what you got on the outside. It's about what you got on the inside. Something on the inside, working on, on the outside, outside brought about a change, change in, in me. me. Amen. Amen. And I just want to point out here that it says in hell being in torments. Yep. That's torments. That's plural. plural. Not torment, but torments. So I don't want to find out what all those torments are, but it's not somewhere that you want to end up. There's it it pays to be saved. Oh, you got that right. Because it, it says right here. It says what did it say? How did he say that? Let's see. For the Christian death is a promotion. It's a it's a promotion to, to to be saved. You get promoted when you're saved. Amen. Amen. So it says the beggar Lazarus died and was promoted to paradise. The rich man died and was cast into hell where he was in torments. At the final resurrection, Jesus tells us that they have done good. Uh, that that. They that, they that have done good will enter into the uh, resurrection of life, being eternal life in the presence of the Lord. And they that have done evil will enter into the resurrection of damnation. Yeah, so, so you need to understand that it, you're going to spend eternity somewhere. And I think we talked about this before. Yep. You're not going to burn up uh, in hell. Uh, you're going to live for eternal whether, wherever you're at. It's going to be an eternal damnation mm-hmm. or it's going to be eternal blessings. Uh. That rich man is still in torments, and Lazarus is still rejoicing. So somebody had a question, so those in hell can see those in heaven and vice versa? I, I, we're, we're going to get into that, but I'll, I'll just share it with you. It's going, this yep. book's going to take us there. But uh, at that point in time, Jesus had not died. died. There you go. And there was a holding place uh, called paradise or uh, Abraham's bosom, and it was, it was in the earth because they said that hell's in the earth. But there was not together, but you could see a cross. Heaven wouldn't be heaven if you could divide. see some of your loved ones. And he saw, he saw the rich man burning in hell. The rich man saw Lazarus because he talked to him. He said, you know, let him bring some water. So, but when Jesus, when Jesus resurrected, uh, the Bible says that he went into the earth 
and led captivity captive. Now, I've heard preachers preach this, and I, I didn't believe it, don't believe it now. I believe that when he went in there, I believe he got the saints of God that was in Abraham's bosom, and he, because they were in captivity there, because they they was in uh, there where hell was at, right? Not in heat or nothing, not in torment, but Jesus took them out and took them into heaven. Yes. And so you know, you know that's what that's what happened right there. Because this is why I say that he didn't preach to the to the to the lost, because you can't you can't if that wouldn't be fair. If they get a second chance and we don't get a don't get a second chance, right? I mean, once you make your choice and you die, you're gonna spend eternity. They had an opportunity; they just did it in a different way than we had to do it. Mm-hmm. But we had the best way. But some of them lived a better life than we lived. Read Hebrews chapter eleven, and you'll find out that they was God did good people. That's it. And so they said, "Is that where Jesus went on the second day after his death to bring those from Abraham's bosom?" Yep. Yes. Answer that question is yes. All right, in the final, final resurrection, Jesus tells us that they that have done good will enter into the resurrection of life, eternal life in the presence of the Lord. And they that have done evil will enter into the resurrection of damnation. John 5, 28 through 20, 29. Verse 28 says, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice. How did that start out? Marvel not. Wonder not. At this, don't, don't be confused. Don't be confused of this. And shall come forth they that have done good under the resurrection of life, and they that have done evil under the resurrection of damnation. Heaven is final, and hell is final. Confusions of the devil. That's what the Bible says. That's it. And, and when you got confusion, you got to understand there's a, there's a spirit driving that. That's right. Heaven is final. Hell is final. You got to understand something that once you die. The chances of you making things right are over. Amen. You know, uh, Job, Job believed in a resurrection. And, and I wrote it down because I, I read it today, or I had Aunt Judy read it to me. Uh, John, Job chapter 14, if you will, Pastor Marcus, go to chapter 14, verses uh, chapter 12. No, chapter 14, verses 12 through 14. Y'all turn your Bibles to Job chapter 14. Verse 12 through 14. And then stay there because I got just another scripture too, right in, just right in there with that. <laughs> we had it and I just uh, lost it. Job 14, verse 12. Job chapter 14, verse 12. So man lieth down and riseth not. Till the heavens be no more, they shall not awake nor be raised out of their sleep. Verse 13 says, Oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be passed, and thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. A set time to remember me, to put me back together. In verse 14, If a man die, shall he live again? Uh Uh-huh. It says, all the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change comes. That's awesome, isn't it? It is. R- read, read um, let me see, is there, let me see if I've got it. No, I don't, no, 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 I don't want to read that one. I, that was one I, I was thinking about right there. Okay. Okay. Yep. You good? I'm good. All right. So he's waiting till his change we'll comes. We'll wait until our change comes. Amen. Uh, somebody asked Bishop, "What what will what will happen after the devil is released after the thousand years? When he's when he's loose for a thousand years, he's going to tempt everybody that he can. Yeah, he's going to try to deceive everybody that he can and cause them to to believe uh, in him and not in God, just like he is today. And so the reason I believe this is happening at that point in time because there's going to be people after the rapture of the church that's going to walk uh, into uh, the thousand year millennial reign." And so they've, they've, they're going to have to uh, make up their mind whether they want to believe in God or whether they don't want to believe in God or in Jesus. Same, same. So that, that's why. Well, that's good. Brother Michael Callens commented this, said the church didn't have much, but they had Jesus. <laughs> uh, <laughs> he said to also read Revelations chapter 2 and verse 8. And unto the angel of the church in Smyrna write, these things saith the first and the last, which was dead and is alive. Right. 
Okay? Uh, heaven is yet what was dead and is now alive. Uh, hell is, heaven is final and hell is final. Luke 16, 23 through 26. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments. That's what I had wrote. Down. And seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me and send Lazarus that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue for I am tormented in this flame. Folks, if you're not saved, this is what you're going to experience. That's right. You don't want to be there. Not, not for just a little while. It's not going to ever end. It's eternal. Our feeble minds can't, can't comprehend We can't even comprehend eternity. eternity. That's, why, that's why when God says in Job chapter 4, 14, he said life, uh, uh, let me see, Man that's born after woman is a few days and full of trouble. He's like a flower. He grows up one day and cut down the next. And so, but why is that? Because the time eternal, God looks eternal, and we can't, we can't understand eternal. So according to if we live 100 years, that won't even, you can put that in, it couldn't even see it. Not a drop of a hat. Uh, uh, against uh, eternity. Yeah, exactly. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. It was fixed. Uh, so that they which would pass from, uh, would, from hence to you cannot, neither can they pass to us. They, that would come from thence. You know what I think that great gulf was that, that was fixed? What's fixed? The word. Go ahead. That's 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 it, it, the thing that uh, people think. That, well, if we burn up, then why 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 are they saying talking about seeing the rich man? He didn't burn up. He ain't gonna burn up. He's still burning. He's still burning. And so, I mean, you can't you can't tell me that. Well, I'm just gonna burn up. Don't matter no way. Uh, I'll just you know no no you ain't gonna burn up. You're gonna live eternally in that place. Uh, but that was a, that was a good answer, Trey. He said, wouldn't the water just evaporate? He was talking about the, 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 the ruler wanting the drop of water. He's like, wouldn't it just evaporate in all the heat? He hey, probably would have, Trey. It, it wouldn't have, would have. It never made it there, <laughs> it would it? It would have never made it there. Uh, somebody asked, and I've heard it said that the devil is not omnipresent, which no. he isn't. Will he be during the thousand years? No. No. I think he'll still he'll be. He'll never be omnipresent he, because that never, would put him in league with God. Uh, yep. There you go. All right. Uh, let's see. The rich man was sorry, but there was no escape from hell. There's no escape from hell. The rich man's life was consumed in self-centered living. Y'all need to listen. He made the wrong choices and suffered eternally. Eternally, I want you to. Uh, I want you to know there's consequences to sin. There's consequences here on earth to your sin, and there's con these eternal there's eternal consequences to your sin as well. Exactly. You know, Pastor Marcus, he 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 didn't even say God forgive me or anything. But you know what he did say? He said, uh, "Send somebody to tell my brothers. Send Lazarus. Let him. He still want to use Lazarus. Send, send him to to my brothers." And, and, and Jesus said, "No, they got the prophets. Now listen to me." You can't go on the coattail of your pastor. You can't Amen. go on the, the apron string of your mama. Uh, you, this is something you got to do yourself. Amen. You got to make up your mind. It don't matter what they believe. What It makes a difference what you believe because you're going to be judged accordingly to what you believe and what you accepted. Can, can, we just, can we just sidetrack here for just a minute and just talk, just be kind of funny for a second? <laughs> And I know this is a very serious moment, but yeah. sometimes light, light hardness does the body good. Uh, Brother Daryl wanted to know if there was going to be tea in heaven. Now what? Tea. What? Tea. You know, tea. Tea? Yeah. And so I got this. The Lord gave me revelation on this. Okay, go ahead. I want to hear it. In, in hell, there'll be unsweet, and in heaven, it'll be sweet. <laughs> well, there won't be no diabetes up there, so I guess it'll be okay. <laughs> 
Back on track. I just had to throw that out there. I'm on back, y'all. <laughs> but this is a very important subject. You need to understand something, that hell is real and so is heaven, and they're both eternal. That means forever. And, and there's consequences to your sin. There's consequences to not living right. Today, even as a sinner here on earth, we we, we find the consequences of our sin that we, we have to pay those now, but you'll also have to pay for those eternally as well. You know, the, the word of God says, whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Yep. And that means here on earth, too. You're going to reap it hereafter, but you're going to reap it here on earth. Because if you're an alcoholic and you, you, you're just crazy and do all kind of stupid stuff, and your liver gives out on you and all that stuff, you're going to oh. reap that stuff. And so, you know, you need to pay attention to what God's saying because he wants you to live and be happy. Uh, somebody else had a, a, a question about the devil and the and and the thousand years. What? So how is that? How is that different than him reigning on earth today? Because he will not be able to be omnipresent then, and he's not omnipresent now. He, he, listen, listen to me. He, folks. I don't think it'll be any different. I think it's going to be, be just this, like it is right now. But the worse. devil's a devil. Yeah, the devil's and, and a he'll devil. He'll put thoughts. He'll he'll tempt you, just and as the, he did Eve. I'll tell you what'll be different is is that there'll be no there'll be no praying. There'll be no churches. There'll be none of that going on because it'll be it will be out of here. It'll say very few. Um, well, no, then that thousand-year mental, mental, mental reign. The, <laughs> millennial the part, reign. Millenn we're going to be here. Yeah. We're going to be here. Thanks to God, we'll be here. That thousand years. Because at that point, it says in Revelation 20, verse uh, 3, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be right. loosed a little after season. After the thousand years. So that point won't be different what the part that will be different than now is the thousand years that he's bound and not allowed to deceive right there you go good 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 dig in there sister emily first lady the rich man's life was consumed in self-centered living he made the wrong choices and suffered eternally eternally luke 16 22 through 23 says that it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into abraham's bosom the rich man also died and was buried y'all see the the, the the different contrast there of the angels and they says that they carried off the, the poor man and what, what the saying? rich let, man let was the buried. Dead bury the dead. Let the dead bury the dead. And in hell he lift up his eyes being in torments and seeth Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. Lazarus lived all his life in poverty, in poverty, but his heart was right with God. His name means God is my help. And he never he never gave up his faith in God. He he um he died and was immediately taken to paradise with Abraham. The destinies of both men were irreversible at death. It's over then. It's over then. Right. Job believed in the resurrection. Job 19, verse 25 through 27 says, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I, shall I see God. Amen. Verse 27 says, Whom shall I see for myself? And mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. All right. Question, when we get to heaven, is there a chance to sin and be cast out of heaven, or will we, will be, or will we be perfect? We'll be we perfect. will be perfect. There yeah. will be no sin in heaven. There's no sin there, so we won't have to worry about that. Thank well, you, you see, this is the thing. We won't be, we won't be flesh. No. Right. We'll be spirit. Right. And, and the spirit of God, you know, I mean, we're, going, we're not going this is what causes sin. Right, the flesh. This flesh is what causes us to sin and to do things we shouldn't do. But when we are changed in a moment, twinkling an eye, we're going to be spirit. We're going to have a body. It's going to be a spiritual body. And, and we, we're not going to sin because we're not wrestling with flesh and blood and principalities. Okay. All right. Worms may destroy this present body after we die, but we shall see God and we will have a new glorified resurrected body. Amen. Amen. 
We work for the Lord knowing that time is short. James wrote in James chapter 4 and verse 14, Whereas you know not what shall be on the morrow, for what is your life? It is even a vapor that appeareth for a little time and then vanish away. Folks, we're here for just a vapor. Bishop, how long ago was it when you was a, a, a young boy? Yesterday. I'm serious. I mean, I, I'm, I can't believe, I, can't, I don't know how I got here. I'm so I'm so confused, you know, because I mean I was just I was 16 and and I was good looking and I think I think that and I'm not I'm not even halfway to where you are. I know it, but you know what? Tomorrow, myself. tomorrow, right? I will be. Your kids will be grown, and I'll be gone. <laughs> <laughs> I already got it. I already got two daughters that I mean one of them's already nearly taller than I am, and I'm like, what happened to my baby? You know, I always heard. I, I always heard to to be mindful because it goes by quick. Well, you know, you're mama's baby. I am. Her <laughs> nudie booter. Still. You ain't my baby. Your mama's baby now. <laughs> Marchie. <laughs> I'm giving away all my pet names. Y'all didn't know nothing about except for Juju. She, if you're around Juju very often, <laughs> you know she'll go. That's my sweet nudie booter. Yeah. I don't know why anybody wanted to name me that. <laughs> when we are finished our work here on earth, we'll go to heaven where we will reap our eternal, our re eternal reward. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8, For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Verse 8 says, Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You know, folks, you need to understand something. Here's Paul talking about he's finished his course and run his race. And there, there is laid up for him a crown. What's going on over here? Nothing. Go ahead. Okay. And, I was and, and uh, he, he had a... a uh, uh, in his flesh, he had a thorn in his flesh. Right. And he prayed, and God said, my grace is sufficient. We don't know what the thorn is. Some say it was his eyes. That's my thorn, some of it. But uh, also, the apostle Paul said, you know, he said, the things I ought to do, I don't do. And the things, you know, I do, I wished I didn't do or should do. The, the, in other words, Paul, Paul if, if you got to understand something, we are flesh and blood. And the only way we can overcome our flesh is through Christ Jesus. I couldn't do it without him. I, I, I mean, I, I was so messed up. And I just imagine a bunch of y'all out there was probably messed up a whole lot worse than I was. But messed up is messed up. Whether it be a little dent or a big dent, it's got to be beat out. It's got to be repainted. You know, you got to get it fixed. So you need to get fixed today. And it's not, not on drugs and not on alcohol and not on porn, but it's on Jesus Christ. He wants Amen. to fix you. Amen. And I just want to say, you know, we do have fun here, and we want y'all to have fun. You know, it's not like we're, we're somebody, you know, all, all this. We're not that. We're just country boys that loves God. And, and we want to enjoy our relationship with you and want you to enjoy watching, Amen. you know, and not just be so, uh, you know, so heavenly minded with no yeah. earthly good. There you go. Amen. Okay. Paul said in 2 Timothy 4, 6 through 8, For I am now ready to be offered. We read that. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord the righteous judge shall give me at that day, and not me only, but unto all them also that love is appearing. Paul knew his work was finished, and he was about to go to heaven and receive his crown of righteousness. Life in the Spirit Study Bible points out why the resurrection is an essential doctrine in Scripture. Excuse me, I knew it was coming, so y'all had to forgive me. Uh, the resurrection of the body. Now, this is a life and spirit study Bible says this. There's another one coming. Y'all pray for me. Ooh, hallelujah. The resurrection of the body is an essential doctrine in Scripture. It refers to God's raising a human body from the dead and reuniting it, it with the person's soul and spirit. And it says, from which at death it was separated during the inter intermediate state. Now, this is going to answer a bunch of questions for y'all, so y'all listen and pay attention. The Bible reveals at the last three reasons why the resurrection of the body is necessary. A, 
The body is essential to the total human personality. Humans are incomplete without a body. Thus, the redemption Christ offers applies to the whole person, including the body. What did God create when he created us? Mind, body, soul, and spirit, all of it together. He created every bit of it. It's all his. So to, for us to think that we can't have a, a body in heaven is kind of crazy because God created it, and if it's his and he wants it there, then guess what? It's going to be there. Amen. You know, we didn't come out of a mud hole or a monkey with its tail fell off. Amen. We're created by God himself. He said, let us make man in our own image. Amen. Amen. So it says B. There's, that was A. Here's B. The B. The body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Man, this is answering some, some questions we get a lot, and it's answering them really well. Uh, and it will, become, it will become once more a temple of the Spirit at the resurrection. Amen. Then we shall know in full. Then we shall we, know we, in we, full. The Bible says we know in part and see in part. But when that which is perfect is come, we will know in full. That's Hebrews chapter... Hebrews chapter... Chapter 13, and what's the love chapter? It's 13, isn't it? Uh, First Corinthians. First Corinthians 13. 13, yes. Yeah. C, to undo, undo the result of sin at all levels, humanity's final enemy, death of the body, must be conquered through the resurrection. Number two, both the Old Testament and the New Testament teach the future the future bodily resurrection. Psalm spoke of this resurrection of Christ in Psalm 16.10. For that will not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. The New Living Translation reads it like this. For you will not leave my soul among the dead or allow your holy one to rot in the grave. Amen. That's good. The Old Testament taught the resurrection of the dead. Job spoke of the resurrection in Job 19, 25 through 27. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin uh, worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my body... my my reins be consumed within me. Isaiah spoke of the resurrection in Isaiah 26, 19. Thy dead men shall live together with my dead body. Shall they rise, awake, and sing, you that dwell in the dust. For thy dew is as of the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Daniel spoke of the resurrection in Daniel 12, 2. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. Amen. Uh, the New Testament speaks of the resurrection as well. Jesus spoke of the resurrection in Luke 14, verse 13 through 14. But then thou makest a feast, call the poor, the maimed, the lame, the blind, and th thou shalt be blessed, for they cannot recompense thee. For thou shalt be recompensed at the resurrection of the just. Amen. Luke 20, 34 through 36, And Jesus answering you said unto them, The children of this world marry and are given in marriage, but they which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world and the resurrection from the dead neither marry nor are given in marriage. Neither can they die anymore, for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection. John 5, 28 and 29, marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in which all that are in the grave shall hear his voice and shall come forth and that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. John 6, 39 through 40, and in this, in the, and this is the Father's will which hath sent me that all of that which uh, he hath given me I should lose nothing but should raise it up again at the last day. And this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at that last day. John six forty four. No man can come to me except the Father, which has sent me to draw him, and I will raise him up at that last day. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor Marcus, a lot of, and, and I, I believe that I, I've, heard, I've heard people say, well, <laughs> Excuse me, if uh, 
I have a car wreck, I'm not going to give my heart to God now, but if I have a car wreck, I'm going to, before I die, I'm going to give my heart to God. Well, I'm, I heard it. I talked to a guy that had a wreck, and I asked him, I said, well, did you pray? He said, you know, I didn't even think to pray. Yep. Uh, and besides that, you might be taken out so quick you don't have time to pray. You better, you better make things right today. Today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not next month. You're not promised another, another day. That's it. Amen. Amen. Uh, somebody said, when we come back with Christ, will we know our loved ones that died before us? When we come back with Christ, uh, well, or maybe you mean, will we know them in heaven? I believe we'll, we will know them in heaven, but we will not know them like we knew them on earth because you got to understand something about heaven. Heaven is a perfect place. So you're, you're going to look at them in a different light, I believe, than what you looked at them here on earth. And so you'll know who they are. I, I, I believe that. I believe that you'll recognize them. But the things that you remember, because you, you're going to you got to understand, you're going to have a greater love there, a greater peace there, a greater understanding there. So really, we can't comprehend how we're going to recognize them, but we will recognize them. I, I'm, I need to share right there, Pastor Marcus. The Bible teaches us that we'll be known as we are known. I believe right. when I get to heaven, I'm going to know my mama, my daddy, those that are there. But if somebody in my family's not there, I won't ever, I won't ever, it be something that's erased out of my mind. But I believe I'll know you, Pastor Marcus, and I'll know First Lady and Sister Judy, my wife, my kids, my grandkids, if they make it. I'm going to know them, and I'm going to love them in a way I never have loved them here on earth because it's going to be a perfect love. Uh, I I, I say this sometimes, and you may think I'm crazy, but I had a a little dog, and her name was Sweetie. She was a Jack Russell, and she loved me. I I never had a dog. I never that my wife loves me. I tell you, I heard her say to my daddy one time, Daddy. Uh, to my dad said, Daddy, I'll, I'll fight the gates of hell for him. And she would. Yeah. But that little dog taught me more about uh, unconditional love. I, I, maybe I didn't feed her when I ought to have. Maybe I got on to her when I shouldn't have got on to her. But that little dog loved me, and, and I, I, I miss her. I miss her so much. But God can teach us through things like that. So... Love in heaven, it's going to be so greater than we could have ever known it here on earth. That, that you love your children in a greater way, your husband in a greater way. But you won't know him as your husband, but you'll know him as he is known. I'll know you as Marcus. Right. Uh, in, yeah. Uh, Trey has a question. Trey's been full of questions tonight. A lot of these questions we've asked tonight have been Trey's, and they're good questions. When we go to heaven, will we know everyone or just people we knew on earth? I believe we'll know everyone. Jesus knows everyone. And if we're going to be like him, then we're going to... I'm I'm going to be looking for some people up there. John the Baptist. (laughs) John the Baptist, Paul. uh, Silas. uh, uh, Daniel. Uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abend. I'm going to be looking for these guys. I'm going to. I got some questions. <laughs> well, I, I think I think we will because the Bible says that we, when we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, then we become joint heirs with Jesus as sons and daughters of God. Right. So if we're all sons and daughters of God, we all we all know our brothers and sisters. We're all going to get there. We should and be one big happy family. And so it'll be one big giant family reunion that will not have any drama or chaos. Hallelujah. (laughs) When, when When we know as God knows, I I don't I don't think we can comprehend that. Because we're gonna be we're gonna be perfect. Uh you know, he he had Adam to name all the animals. Yeah. I mean, right. I, I mean, he had such a mind and such, you know, and so we're going to be that way. I thought about that statement. I said, I, I got some questions I'm going to have to ask some people. The problem is, and it's not a problem, uh, but the thing is, is that when I get to heaven, I'm probably going to already know those answers when I get there because, you know, it says I'll, 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 I'll know. And That's then, what I've always I'm, thought. You it, know, I'm like. It's like a snap of a finger. Yeah. When we get there, it's like automatically. Automatically, you're going to understand it. You're going to have the understanding. We didn't have here. You know. Somebody said, so we need to love our spouses now as we should. Uh, 
as as we should while we can. You better love them like you can right now. <laughs> You ain't going to get a second chance. <laughs> Brother Jim D says, do we have to buy them all Christmas presents? The answer to that question is yes. You better. <laughs> I'm going to need some stuff to put in my mansion. At that Amen. point, your Christmas present will be for Jesus for sure. We're going to stop birthday. right here on page 187 tonight. Yeah, we're about, to, we're about to get carried away. One more question. Will we remember family members that didn't make it? To heaven. No. Bishop answered that. No. Uh, no, that is not. We will not know that. That would not be but, heaven. Because you right. would not be happy if you knew that, right? So sure. the Bible says we will not know any sadness or sorrow when we get over there. He so says, what did he say? I'll wipe away all I'll tears. I'll wipe away all the right. tears. And so the, that those tears that you have shed because you, you might not have wondered or might not have known, you it's going to be okay. Amen. Amen. Lord help. We done gone to 825 tonight. Yeah. We get to talking watching. about it, folks. I'm not going to apologize for it because we love it. it you know, you've stayed with us, so we appreciate that. And uh, we hope you've enjoyed it tonight. We hope that God's blessed you in one way or another. If you don't know Jesus, I want you to know tonight that you can know him. You can come to know him as your personal Savior right where you are. No matter what you've been through or what you've done, he'll wipe those, that sin away, never to be remembered again. And we give, we give God the glory for that tonight. We give God, we give God thanks for this word that he's given us tonight. Uh, just an awesome Bible study. We hope you enjoyed it. We hope you join us Sunday at 1030. We're going to have drive-in church, weather permitting. Make sure you're watching and listening for updates on that as we go. Uh, we're going to get prepared for that. And we just hope you come expecting amen. And we're just going to uh, come and serve together and worship together. We are going to hopefully work uh, to have our live stream up that day also so that those of you that can't drive that live far enough away could still watch us live uh, as we have drive-in church. But we will be outside, but with some of the technology and things we got going now that we figured out tonight, we can do some pretty cool things. So, uh uh, we're still cooking. Uh, we fed today. We had a good day. We fed over 100 people today. Uh, we give God the glory for that. And we'll be feeding again on Friday uh, from 11 to 1. So if you're hungry, church folks, if you live close by and you're hungry, come get you something to eat. We'd love to serve you. It'd just be a blessing to you. If you know somebody that needs a meal that's not uh, able to get food or, or is struggling right now, please let us know. We'll try to get it to them the best that we can. Not going to make any promises, but we will do our best uh, to get that delivered to them if need be, okay? All right. Let's dismiss in prayer tonight. God, we just come to you, Lord. We just thank you for your word. We thank you for your promises, God. Lord, that we are going to resurrect one of these days, God, if we should die here on earth. And Lord, that we will be, uh, Lord, uh, met back up with you, God. We thank you for that. God, we thank you, Lord, that tonight, God, if there's one that's not saved, Lord, that would repent, God. Lord, that they would, uh, Lord, ask for forgiveness of their sins and accept you into their heart as their Lord and Savior tonight, God. I just pray tonight, God, those that are watching, Lord, would understand, God, that they need to get ready, God, that you are coming again. And Lord, you are coming very soon. And Lord, it is no time, God, to Lord play games, Lord, to, to be in and out of church, Lord, to, to try to straddle the fence. But God, that we must get committed, get on the meat of this word, God. And Lord, we thank you for that. And God, we give you praise for it, Lord. And we just ask you to protect us, touch those that are sick in body. And God, we'll give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We love you tonight. God bless you. We'll see you back here on Sunday, 1030. Amen. Sounds like a winner. Sounds like